and Sarah Stampin' Retreat. Today I want to focus on stretching our craft supplies so we're going to create five different cards with one stencil and the stencil is from this Morning Asters layering stencils so you've got all of the layering stencils to create these florals but I'm going to concentrate just on this one stencil which is actually an additional stencil so these three that you can see here are to layer up to colour these florals and this one is just additional leaves that you can use with it. I'm just going to use this stencil today. So the other thing I'm going to be trying today that I've not tried yet are these detailed blending brushes from Altenew. I wanted to try these after I loved the other blending brush that I got from them so much. So these detail ones, you get them in a pack of three, you can see there's plastic still on them. Um, so you get this really fine detail one, the mid one, and this larger one. So I'm just going to have a play with them and see how they work today because I've not tried them yet. I just had to buy them after trying the gorgeous blending brush that I had that I shared you with you in the Mar Marvellous Monthly video. So for this card, I'm just going to, I've got a five and a half by four and a quarter inch card blank and I'm just going to cover it with leaves and I'm using the also new fresh dye ink so I've got jade, eucalyptus, silver sage and forest fern. So I'm going to start with this silver sage because that's the lightest colour. I'm going to start with the thinnest blending brush and just kind of like get a feel for each of them. So let's see that's come out nicely. I don't think that I need a brush this fine for going through the stencils so I'm going to save that one for adding some detail later and I'm going to try this bigger brush. And I'm still sticking with the silver sage for now. And yeah, I think that that size brush is perfect for just doing the main bit of the um, colour. I'm going to mix in some jade as well. So let's do the next one in jade. And I'm switching between all the all the um, leaves as well. I do like these because you can hold them like a pencil rather than the other ones where you kind of have to hold them this way. So now we've got this, which is really pretty, but I want to add another level. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add a bit of detail and I might use the smaller brush for that. So I'm going to add detail to the ones that we've done in Silver Sage with the Jade. I'm going to use Eucalyptus to add detail to the ones that I did in Jade before. So I'm using one shade darker to add detail to each one. So I'm just adding a little bit of detail to the kind of like the stem and the ends of the leaves. Just so you kind of get a bit more of a variegated look. And do you see how adding that extra layer of colours really adding some life to those leaves? So I'm going to add some detail to the ones with eucalyptus now. And there's nothing really technical to this. I'm literally just going down the stem and pushing a bit of colour into each of the leaves. So it's a dead easy t technique just to add a little bit of life to your leaves. So you can see how beautifully that background has come out. Then I've used this Happy Birthday to You die from this Tim Holtz Bold Text Number no. 1 and I've cut it out of this brushed gold cardstock. So I'm going to use this outline on a different card. But I'm actually going to use the text itself on this card. So I'm going to just pop this because I'm going to use this as kind of my guide as to where the letters should go so they're nicely spaced. And then I'm just going to just use some low tack adhesive tape to tape that on so it stays in place. And then I've put all the letters through this Xyron Creator sticker machine. As far as I'm aware you can't get this particular one now because it's really old. But I will link below something similar and you just pop the letters through here, pull it out the bottom 
and it makes it into stickers then I can just tear that off and then I'm going to burnish all of those down and the burnishing just makes it kind of not stick where it's not supposed to I just find that really helpful for things like this where they're really fine letters so then I'm going to pop all those in the right places so I'm kind of essentially using it a bit like a jigsaw puzzle Then I can take this off, take off the outline, and then my greeting is nicely aligned there. Then for this second card, we're going to use the really similar layout to the first card, but we're going to use different products to create it, so it's going to have a really different look. And that's all stuff that you'll probably have in your craft stash at home already. So I'm going to do some heat embossing through the stencil. So you could do this several ways. I like to use my Versamark refill and put that through because you get a thicker coat. But you could um, use your Versamark pad straight through or you could um, use a blending tool with your Versamark pad through. I prefer this way because I think it gives the, uh, the best coverage. But any of those ways will work. So I'm going to add a bit of the Versmart refill to my acrylic block and I've got here an A6 so that's four and eighth by five and seven eighth card blank made of matte pine needles card stock from the paper box. I'm just going to use this to pack some of the ink through this leaf. And I'm going to use a few different colours of embossing powder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread this out. Um, I'm going to fill in the gaps later. And you'll notice that I'm using a different technique for applying the ink with this. So whereas with the brushes, I go round onto the ink pad and round again onto the paper. With this, I do a dabbing motion. I find that that works better for this. The other thing I'd say with, some of, with this is that you always want some of your leaves to go off the sides to give kind of more organic look. So I'm going to bring in some scrap paper and go with gold embossing powder first. So let's pop some gold embossing powder all the way over those leaves. And then I'm going to heat this up. So then I'm going to come in with another one of the leaves. And I'm going to do the same again in some of the gaps. And then this time I'm going to use this golden peach embossing powder. And the trick now is try not to heat up the gold again. It won't matter if it gets a bit of heat on it, but you don't want too much heat on it because otherwise it's going to over emboss. And probably I should have done the largest to the smallest leaves because it's easier to fit in the, the smaller leaves afterwards. So I'm going to go in with this larger one next. I'm going to use some copper embossing powder on this one. And I'm going to come in with this final leaf. And then for this final one, I'm going to use the Alternate Pure White Embossing Powder. So then for this one, I'm going to use the outline of the Happy Birthday to You that we used for the last one. And I'm going to glue that to a piece of this same Pine Needles cardstock. And that's because if I put it on like that, because you can see the flowers through, I don't feel like it's as legible so i'm going to put it straight onto this green cardstock this is a nice way to get two sentiments from the one die cut as well and then you may have seen when i was showing the last card that i put all the kind of waste pieces onto here as well so now i can put those into here So you might have noticed somehow I've managed to smudge some of the Versamark ink down here, which is not great. So 
I was going to have it up there like the other one, but I'm actually going to prop this down here on this card. And then I can just cover that up and no one, apart from us, <laughs> will know that there was um, ever a mistake there. So let's pop some foam pads on the back of that sentiment. And you know, if you particularly wanted that to be at the top, the sentiment, you could always chop this off this card and put it that way up on a different card and put it at the top but I don't mind this being at the bottom I think because it's such chunky sentiment um, it kind of sits well at the bottom as well as you can see we've used the same stencil we've used an all over print on both of these cards but they've come out with a really different look we've kind of got this like nice springy look on this one and this kind of really rich look to this one so sometimes you can just change up the products that you're using to get the most out of like stencils and stamps and things and get some really nice looks so for the next card i've got a five inch square card and i'm actually going to use my sakura pigma micron pen just to outline some of these leaves onto my card. So then I'm going to choose my Sakura Jelly Roll pens to colour in the leaves. And I'm going to kind of mix and match them a bit as well. So then I've cut the thank you so much from the same die set as we've used previously from black cardstock. I've just got a piece of vellum that I'm going to pop behind it. And then I can glue on these bits where they're needed. So I've just got some foam strips that I'm just going to put behind here. Um, so I can pop it up without you seeing the foam. Then so that's that card finished. Then for this next one I've got a four inch piece of white cardstock and I'm going to use the same colours we used before, these greens, those are the ones that we used for the first card, to blend through some leaves. I'm going to use the same two-tone technique as I used last time for the first card but I'm going to have them overlap a bit this time. So I think that looks really nice with all the leaves overlapping and now I'm just going to pick out some little details of my pen. So I'm just going to go over a few of them. I'm just going to freehand outline So you can see I've added in a few details on there. I feel like if I was leaving it the size then I would need something here to balance it out a bit but I'm actually going to cut it down just a little bit. So I've got the letters from this thank you so much that we used here but I only want to use the thank you on this one, I don't want the so much. So I've cut it again in this gold cardstock because we'll use it again next time. And I've cut it around the thank you so that I can place the thank you nicely. And I'm going to use the same trick that we used on the first card where I'm going to tape it down so that I can get the placement of the black letters right. So then we've got our nicely placed letters. So I cut this down to three and three quarter inches square and then I've got a four inch square piece of gold that I'm going to attach underneath it. And I do quite often like to, when I'm kind of messing about with things like this, I like to, to make it a little bit bigger than I know I'm going to need just so that I can cut it down and kind of get the best bits. Like how there wasn't really an obvious um, leaf to outline down here, then I could cut that side off and it looks more balanced now. So the five inch square card blank that I'm gluing it onto is made some from some more of that pine needles cardstock, which I think is a really nice kind of deep kind of 
tealy green colour. So there's that one finished. And then for my final one, I'm actually going to use this thank you sentiment again. But for now, I'm going to use this kind of middle piece as almost like a mask. I'm going to just tape it in the middle so that I've kind of got the area where my sentiment's going to go. And then I'm going to just put my embossing body around the rest of it. And then I'm going to use my first mark ink again. I'm going to use my smoothie sponge again. And I'm just going to add like a frame of leaves around the outside. I'm going to heat emboss this first bit in gold. So now I'm putting on the um, golden peach. So now I'm going to pop this back on here, but this time I'm going to tape it at the top and the bottom so that I can use it to place the letters. And these letters are slightly bigger so I'm going to put the glue onto the cardstock and I'm actually using this as a kind of a template to put the glue on and then I'm going to pop the um, letters into the gaps and that will help stop the glue getting really messy. Now I've got the nice thank you with the border around. So then there are all five of today's cards. You can see we've got some really different looks from using the same stencil. I'd love to hear what you think. Let me know in the comments which is your favourite. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I'd appreciate you clicking like below. And you can also press subscribe if you'd like to see future videos. If you press the bell button and select all, then YouTube will also notify you when I've got a new video available. All of the products that I've used to make today's cards are listed in the description below and there's also a link there to my blog where you can find a picture supply list if that helps you find what you're looking for. Thank you so much for joining me today, I hope to see you again soon.